Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rishi TCG here, and we're back with another video. And today, we're gonna go over a comprehensive deep dive into Rob Lucci OP8 matchup guide. Yeah, I just said a fucking shit ton of words, but let's get started. In this matchup guide, we're gonna be analyzing all Lucci's combos and his first and second curve, and then we're gonna look into his matchups, the percent win rates, and the mulligans, and what I think are tips and tricks that help kind of increase your win rate in the matchup. So, basic pointers. Um, let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is the list I'm working with. Sorry if it's a little bad quality. I just took it straight off the sim. I don't know why I copy pasted like that, but typically we're looking at a list of like just standard core Lucci stuff. Obviously, okay. So there's a couple things I'll talk about in terms of counts. The first thing we're gonna talk about is Brook. I added two, three cost Brooks as additional copies of Lucci, so I could really have the consistency of Gecko being able to kill something. Um, I didn't add a, I think I might add, I remove a brook, but I do think I want to keep at least one brook, so to have it in the trash for an extra copy in case I need to shitty brook more, yeah. Okay, so the next card I want to talk about is the two Kaidos. So the two Kaidos really help me in the Black Yellow Luffy matchup because they're able to kill a Moria and make them trash card. It's something I'll talk about in the matchup guide a little bit later. But I think it's a really good tech card, and if you're struggling with BY, it's uh, really gonna really gonna um, like stand out. But instead, like I said, I think that you could run Kuzon uh, in place of some of these cards, and Kuzon's a really good card, and we're gonna talk about Kuzon in these matchups in a second. But and that being said, I don't know what is better right now, but we're just going to be talking about this list for now and the potential of adding Kuzon but this still matchup guide is still going to apply for the whole format I think this this OP8 format so first curve okay so let's talk about turn one we're going to either play Spandam or Tempest okay so you on Tempest kick I think the only situation you're going to play that shit early is you have multiple copies or playing into a matchup it doesn't matter like BY I would use it early Zoro, I'd use it a little early because you're not really going to get effect out of Zoro with Tempest Kick, especially early, and that matchup is going to be really fast. And then into BY, same thing. But into matchups like the Mirror, Black U Luffy, um, NL, uh, Pudding, uh, Katakuri, you want to keep these events because they're going to play a bunch of big drops and you need to get rid of them, and they will be active and live a little bit later. So we got on three dawn we could either do the same thing kind of or in swing eight k get our fuel our trash and then on five dawn if they played something threatening on four dawn like a kuzon or an Urog then bonnie we can go ahead and ice age luchi that or who's who we need to clear these things because to maintain tempo both of these are two card combos who's who requires you to discard a card and ice age luchi just requires you to um you know bottom three and do that so. Ice Age Luchi might seem a little bit int, but Sammy Wang in both uh, in his top 16 into Bonnie. You can watch the European Liverpool. He Ice Ages Luchi's the Urog on five in two games, and he won both those games in his top 16. So something to keep in mind where the basis is coming off. All right, seven Don, you're going to just slap that jack down unless they play the Kuzon, but you need to get rid of the Kuzon with kind of what we just said. But um, if you don't have the Jack Six Cost Brooks, another option to get rid of the, one of their units on the board. It's not the best option, but if you don't have Jack, um, another thing I wanted to talk about on the list is that I put three copies of Jack. I do not think four copies is necessary. However, if you're afraid of not seeing it, potentially play four copies. I just do not think four copies is necessary. You will see enough, and a lot of times, like missing out on the Jack, then you can play the Jack later. Okay, so back here. Going to nine dawn, we're gonna combo Moria, Ice Age, Tempest. We'll talk about the Moria combos and which ones to play when in a second. But nine dawn is always gonna be we're looking to play an eight or nine cost unit. And then since we're going first after that, now we're playing with all ten dawn. We can either play a Sabo and a Luchi with an Ice Age, or you could play a Rebecca Sabo. Um, we really want to be playing these Sabos in the late game because they're gonna prevent our board from being killed if they're playing black. Or and on top of that, they're gonna filter our hand. On top of that, it's, it's an indestructible blocker unless you're playing into blue. So you're practically healing life in this sort of in this sort of format. But before we do any of that, like Salbos and Rebecca's are great to keep in hand for the late game. But we want to at least get two big bodies, two or three big bodies, which will be how many you probably have in your hand. So 
I think that this is a good just game plan and making sure to keep those salvos. Okay, so for second, we're going to do the same thing on the turn one. On turn two, now we have the option to play Tempo Luchi. I think Tempo Luchi is way better than playing Khalifa on this turn, unless your hand is shit. Tempo Luchi allows for a 7k swing on the sixth on turn if you're going to play Sabo. Okay, now if they played Sabo on five and you're playing the Mary, you can then go ahead and play Brook, but most of the time it's going to be a Sabo on the next turn or a Brook if they played something threatening. So it's the reactive option and the just kind of fuel your resources option at the bottom. Okay, so second curve, obviously on 8 down, we're always going to slap down either a Moria or a Jack with an Ice Age or some shit. Um, Moria is going to be most of the time, and this sort of Moria is going to probably be a utility Moria, and we'll talk about those in a second. Alright, second, we just talked about that, so now you're playing with all 10 down, we just talked about that, and now let's go to Advantage Moria's. Okay, so this is the Utility Advantage, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um... In this, okay, so Gecko Kuzan Spanem and Gecko Rebecca Spanem are probably going to be the most two common ones. If you play Kuzan, which Kuzan's a, um, potentially a good card in a lot of good matchups, but also kind of useless in some matchups, um, it draws you a card, Spanem, and now they're faced with like the Kuzan and the Gecko, which can I kill, can I even kill both, you know, type situation. And then the Gecko Morius Rebecca Spandam combo, we really got um, a lot of options there. Even if you if you get a Span Nine, you can maybe put Khalifa go through your hand a little bit, yeah, stuff like that. But it, it this is really good if you're playing into uh, Rebecca or Spandam is really good if you're playing into an aggro matchup because you're gonna be losing a lot of cards early and getting those cards back through grabbing something off Spandam and a Rebecca is really uh, gonna help you maintain hand size into those defensive matchups. So, next we're going to talk about Lethal Moria. Lethal Moria is all about KO on the board, and I'm sure you guys have heard of the Rebecca Almepo Spandai and Luchi combo and the Rebecca Almepo Brook combo. So, these are the two combos um, that are going to be able to kill um, units. So, right here we can see that with leader ability, Almepo will kill a four cost unit, which isn't really as prevalent because there's not really a lot of four cost units like. With RP Law gone, and but Lethal Moria is gonna be able to kill a five cost unit with uh with with the leader effect, and if you just add a Tempest Kick or even a Suru onto that, boom, you're killing at eight cost. So it's like, it's pretty good. Um, this is kind of why I put the deck. But okay, let's talk about this advantage Moria. Uh, another thing, another thing I want to note is the Spandam can be a Hell Mepo, but because you get Hell Mepo Luchi, but same thing. You get the Spandine, you can either put Khalifa or Luchi, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what matchup which is good in in a second. Alright, let's talk about going first. Uh, real quick, I'm going to reduce the size of my... Okay, can't even reduce that. Well, the PowerPoint size and everything will be in the description, so if you want to follow along and can't read that, just look in the description. Alright, because I'm going to put everything. So... We're going to talk about the Mare. Uh, it's a 50-50 uh, turn order. We're going to pick first. Going first is so important because we can play the Jack on 7, you know, forcing them to react or or, or just ignore it. Um, if you're going second, focusing on, focusing on getting that Kuzan out, forcing them to either have an answer or potentially have a threat that's just going to kill their Jack. In the early game, like I said, we're not going to waste our Tempest Kicks to filter, and you're probably going to need all of them since the Mare. And then another thing to keep in mind is keep in mind to discard Luchi, Helmepo, and Rebecca to set up for those combos, you know. Use your Sabo to discard it or who's who if you're going to play that. The game's going to come down to whoever drops from their top end and their top end sticks. So that means you can keep a lot less counter in these matchups than more. You don't know, always grab 2Ks off, the, um, off your trash. And if we do, if, if our Moria sticks and we do not have another Moria or it's not necessary, like we can just play Sabo to lock it down and keep swinging at them. So that's kind of the just now got a lot more because there's a lot of tips in the mirror. Okay, I like to talk. I like to go down to two to three life because if you're playing this matchup, like they're not playing Isho anymore, so we don't have to worry about them Ishoing us. And I mean, I really like I never really worried about Isho anyway. And if you have to respond to their Gecko Kuzan. Uh, you know, go back to that. I don't know why I read that. Um, we take two to three life, so we can see a lot more options. So I'm trying to say, so if you're, you're always struggling, like, oh, I don't have the right card combinations and shit. You, you, maybe you just need to draw more cards, and you need to be comfortable at a low life range. Even though, like, it might be a little scary, but like, if you're playing these like control decks, like, 
we're not like gonna play really aggressive because you know like they're not just gonna waste a turn just trying to jam at you when you have a gecko on the board all right um if you have to respond to gecko kuzon spandam i think if you don't have a jack on the board and you can't kill the kuzon and the gecko i think you always gonna have to kill the kuzon instead of the gecko otherwise playing that gecko it's gonna uh, like or killing that gecko is gonna be nullified because they're just gonna kill your gecko back you know what i'm saying like but if they can't kill your gecko back and they just uh play another gecko or like or they don't have another gecko like you're not just gonna lose your gecko because they have a kuzon you know what i'm saying so play, playing sabo okay so now let's go to the next one playing sabo in late game is equal to healing like i said so keeping sabos to basically extend the game is somewhat op be making sure to keep rebecca sabos in your hand if your hand size is small utility more you can increase it okay so this is really important actually this this is this last tip so don't swing with jab because if they have to remove it they will jam okay so getting losing your jack is really fucking bad in this in, in this format because you need to keep your jack to win because then you have access to a moria that's purely reduction where jack can just kill a literally a 12 cost off that so um you have to just like don't when you the turn you played if you're not killing like a four cost that's important like it better be like a kuzon otherwise you're just losing your jack and it's just like it's just like fucking stupid because you have to either like what guard out of like fucking 13 or some bullshit okay so another tip is that like i said in the beginning you need a who who's who their kuzon in the mirror if you're going first because you can discard a luchi hopefully for your trash setup and also destroys the, like the whole threat of them you know killing your jack so let's go to the next one all right so like in terms of mulliganing we're looking for a jack since we're going first it's always usually gonna just be the snap to the jack and gecko is also pretty good but really we're gonna need that jack it's not searchable we want a mulligan for it if we're going first and if we see a jack slap this is the only reason i'm like maybe i should play seven or maybe i should play four because if i'm mulliganing for it i don't i want to see it but yeah, I mean, you usually do end up seeing it no matter what. So maybe Mulligan for a more correct tan in the mirror. Not just Jack if it's just like completely bad. But you'll usually end up seeing it because you're going to take a lot of life. And you got, I think you draw like what? One on three, a life. You can go down like three life. So that's three cards. And then one on five and one on. So you're going to see like six cards. So yeah, you have a good chance of seeing it. But try to Mulligan for it. I usually do. All right, so let's talk about BY, which is probably the worst matchup. Um, in this matchup, we're gonna want to go second. We don't hit the hit them early. However, because of this new situation where BYs are playing Tenzans and stuff, you're gonna have to hit them to eight to ten dawn. Because if you don't hit them and they're playing Tenzan and Forzan, they're they're not just they're they're not gonna be punished because and like they're just gonna sit at four life with like fucking Tenzan on the board. And what the fuck are you gonna do? However, if they're at two and they play Tenzan, they're at 5k life, you know, you, you can actually punish them for that and, like, start hitting them with your board because you'll probably have, like, a jack or some other bullshit if, if they played that on Tendon, right? So, that's, like, a thing. Like, if you're, if you're going to hit them, you hit them around 8 to 10 on. All right. Ideally, you want to have an answer for their first five costs. So, that's why Brook is hella decent um six cost brook it gets rid of their five costs even if it's sabo i mean honestly don't get rid of their sabo that's my tip because if they play sabo on five it's not really a big deal you want to save your brook for if they play that power luffy all right that power rocket luffy because you can answer that power rocket luffy and they won't have to what the fuck am i calling it's called the beater luffy but yeah they won't just be going down 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 in life and keeping their hand size so the whole the whole matchup is all about hand size in this matchup i mean don't focus on that but like you're gonna be in a winning situation if you have if, if, if you're able to reduce their hand size don't cut hair hand sizes all right so post six non you're gonna play eight cost i think you need like two big bodies to hit them that have like a 9k stat line even i mean jack's not that bad but you still have to invest it on so swinging at them is always gonna give you like one to two cards per turn if you're gonna swing like nine nine every turn right like one or two if you can swing like an 11 or some shit or they're going to give you a Sabo, right? 
So after you have like two to three big bodies, you're gonna just keep playing Rebecca Sabo. Literally just spam this shit. Or just Sabo. And just like, you're just gonna sit there swinging nine like three times, play Rebecca Sabo. Sit there swinging nine three times, play Rebecca Sabo. I mean, you can hit their board too. Don't just hit their face. Like, if they, if they tilt an ace, you hit them and they give you cards for that, they're probably bad. Oh, yeah. So another thing I wanna go over in the matchup is like, half the people that play this deck are really bad at it. This deck's pretty fucking hard. It's like, it's hard. So I'm saying, like, if you follow these tips and you're playing, like, average BYs, you're going to, like, have a good ch chance of this matchup. It's not as bad. It is winnable. It's not the worst matchup. Just listen to these tips, and I, I promise you, you're going to be able to win. So, um, so you just need to, like, Rebecca Sabo and balance the amount of cards in your hand and try to stay alive. Another uh, tech card that's super useful if you struggle with this matchup is 9 cost Kaido, because if they play that Moria... Bullshit, bullshit combo, like Rocket, Luffy, Sabo, and then, they're like, they Sabo lock their board. Usually, you, you can't kill the Moria unless you broke it, which is kind of ass because you're just getting a 6k body. But now Kaido says, yeah, like, well, let's play Kaido, play a 9k body, activate main, trash one of our cards. You trash a Luchi, for example. They have to trash a card, and trashing cards is, like, really bad into BY. Because, um, like, they already pitch on average two current cards per turn. If they're not playing Rocket Luffy, then put one card a turn. So, like, trashing another card on top of that is, like, naturally reducing their hand. The whole thing about BY is they, like, it's like they kill themselves. You just have to survive long enough for that, like, one turn where they can't buff or they're, or they're buffed and they have, like, two cards in hand. And to get to that, you have to play the long game and just whittle them down, whittle them down. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention on here is you need to guard out of all the early swings. You cannot, like, take go down a life. However, but, I mean, if they swing, like, 7 or 8, like, you're taking that shit. No matter what. You're not pitching more than, like, one card, you know? All right, so the mulligan, like I said, you, I mean, 6 cost book shouldn't be, like, the main form factor in this. But, I mean, it's a great card to have in the hand additional to, a co like, an A cost. So if you got like six cost broke Kaido or six cost broke more, you're obviously keeping. If you don't really have that and like you're struggling to see like a direction in your hand, like probably Mulligan. This is just a general guide, but it's most of the time gonna be like okay, if I have six cost broke, I can answer that five cost, and if I have more, it's looking pretty good. If you're going first, maybe maybe like I mean you're probably still gonna need six cost broke because they're gonna play it on six, and you you know you know what I'm saying. So, let's talk about Black Luffy, because there's so many fucking Luffys in the world. Alright, so, Black Luffy's pretty easy, I'd say, if you know how to play it. But it can be irritating if you're just low rolling. So, turn in order, you're going to go second. If you play Kuzan, I mean, like, it's pretty... I don't think you need it to win it, but it, it's pretty good, because they have really no way to kill it, other than Ice Age Brook or Brook Meppo or Five Nine no, Or, or... What's the other thing? Nah, they could play Who's Who. They're probably not playing Who's Who, though. But having it threatens the... Okay, so having the Kuzan threatens their, them from playing their Jack and it being removed. Again, if when you play your Jack, don't swing him for no reason or rest in the filter. It will change the game if you lose your Jack early without you're without popping a Gecko. So, like, that's going to be ass if you just fucking swung it to filter into a 2K and just lose it. Establishing a jack is really good because then after that when you can establish Rebecca's encounter so like your jack can't just die and they can jam at it um, You can use this reduction gecko which I'm gonna show you in the next slide to kill their jack pretty easily and Spamming this reduction moria is also going to filter your deck and make sure that you can kill anybody they shit out So you can see all your parts and this matchup similar to other black matchups in which you maintain uh, Sabo slash like the Rebecca's in hand, you know what I'm saying? Another thing I want to point out is off of Gecko. If you if if you're always grabbing a 2k off of Rebecca and then advance in in this Moria, let's look at this Moria. Rebecca spanned him, but we're not gonna we're gonna talk about a reduction Moria, which I'm gonna talk about in a second with the minus six. But if you're always grabbing a 2k, ask yourself if Sabo is more valuable because a lot of the times Sabo can be more valuable like that 2k is not a guaranteed out of the swing it's just guard Sabo is a guaranteed like you can't kill this blocker on a lot of matchups so just think about that and try to pick up Sabo more off Rebecca because you might not get another opportunity to grab a Sabo or you might not draw into the Sabo 
and it's really important to have in those black mares. Anyway, so let's talk about Advanced Moria. Advanced Moria is if you have a span on a Khalifa in the trash, and then you have a span. I mean, this this will just give you a minus two, but if you add on to Hell Meppo and Leader Ability, you can get to a minus six with Moria. That means Jack is killing a nine cost off the bat. So, like, that's pretty crazy if Jack's killing a nine cost off the bat without even fucking, like, events, bro. So, like... The only thing is now that Jack's gonna if they if 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 they're playing Black Luffy, Jack's gonna be a twelve cost. Okay. So minus six makes it a six cost. One more Tempest Kick or a Helmeppo out of hand makes it a makes it a three pop with Jack. I, I I did this literally three times in a row and to my roommate today. And he just couldn't get a Jack to stick. I think I killed like at least three. Anyway, um the mulligan's gonna be Kuzon if you have it. All right, and then Jack and Moria. All right, let's talk about Bonnie, okay? Bonnie is pretty fucking free if you just know how to play it. So, also, if, if you put Kuzon, it's even more free. But So, how to deal with Hawkins? That's, like, most of the time, it's that's the problem. Or they let, like, Urog live. Like, those are the two misplays I see. So, unless you're going first, because, on, like, 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 it's pretty easy to get rid of Hawkins if you're going first, because um, on 6 on if they don't have a Urog... They'll just tap out, so you can just do some bullshit and play Jack and kill it. However, with um, however, if their like leader ability is up, then you don't really I, I like I don't like people overestimate how strong Hawkins is, especially like the fact that we're running even more top end now as Lucci. We have a 8k swinger, 9k swingers. Like if they rest at Hawkins, you can just swing into it. They either lose it or they lose their hand. But with the intention of Jack, like killing who's like killing Hawkins just becomes like so much more free. Because you just gotta rest everything before you play it. I mean if they played another Hawkins then again you can just play Moria just swing into their shit so what i want to stress the most in this matchup that is gonna make you win is that you need to kill everything that means like if they played on a rogue you in you the only way to kill it is ice age lucy you you need to kill it because that a rogue will give them tempo that a rogue will help them have leader but that a rogue will make sure that their hawkins um can stay alive so stuff like that those micro early game plays that will set you up for winning Go, uh, I recommend going to watch, like, if you want a good example of how to just shit on Bonnie, go watch um, the Liverpool Top 16 match with Sammy Wang. That's, like, probably one of the best ones. Um, anyway, let's talk about the Mulligan. It's pretty similar. Kuzon, Jack, and Moria. You're going to see it's, like, it's pretty similar in every matchup. It's not very difficult. I mean, I didn't include Kuzon on the curve, which I kind of trolled. But, I mean, you guys all know, like, when the fuck you should play it, I feel like. It's either four, or if you want, I mean, five is fine. All right, let's talk about this horrible fucking godsend deck called Reiju. Fuck. All right, Reiju is, like, a 50% win rate. I feel like maybe it's 55 low-key, but, like, it's better if you're playing Black Luffy. But, okay, so the turn order, you're going to pick second because you don't want them double searching on turn one. That would suck. Um, you're gonna want to counter out of every fucking swing that costs one card because they're gonna each age you and that's gonna hurt. Um, keep track of their dawn for the judge turn because of less like the less because like if they have like a little dawn, like five or six, you can be like okay they got five dawn. All right, Porsche Ichi that costs three. All right, they got two dawn left. Then they're gonna have a five and a seven right. Okay, so he'll probably go. F seven seven at the max okay i have i can take one of those and guard one it's stuff like that like you, you can kind of know with like their their math based on like just the, the, the low amount of dawn they do and like what like they'll generally do uh, so you can kind of keep those counter in hand and know when you need to like get another counter from rebecca or something like that so good rage is going to try to vent early so like because they know that like every time we turn a moria they're gonna have to give us a card because moria is like three cards from their hand and they usually don't want to give us three cards from their hand every turn um so they're gonna prepare for they're gonna be countering out of shit early 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 they're gonna stay at a high life range and then they're gonna keep drawing more and more so they get counter so the only way you're really gonna be able to win this matchup is that you have to get geckos out you have to get like one to two geckos out that's the only way uh you're gonna win this matchup because you need that nine case willing to finish them off i mean i'm not gonna say it's not possible not to but they have to be low rolling uh, good thing if you have Kuzon, if you can play a Kuzon to force a Niji and gain a card, it's a, it, it's an alright strategy if you just want to avoid the fact they're going to play Ichiji, they might just play Ichiji still. Um, uh, 
you won't win if you don't have uh, another reason this matchup might be a little favored and i just haven't tested it that much is you have jack so you, you do have jack and it's a big body and that gets rid of shit so this matchup is honestly pretty tricky if they like see what they need to see and it can be really fucking annoying to just see them go porsche ichi g porsche ichi g um but um it, it is a matchup that counts up and these tips can help you like just win it because i have won it and i uh, it's just it's just fucking it's not fun to play against it's kind of like nami honestly nami's like low-key kind of like more fun to play against now because i'm i'm more i'm more down to just sit there and get nah nah, nah that, that's some lazy talk but anyway you can get easily high roll by porsche G. that's what i was saying so don't beat yourself up about it if it happens it happens it's not the best matchup it's like 50 percent maybe 52 percent i said on the ranked but i think it's 50 um if they play Black Maria, make sure you fucking kill that shit. Or they will judge for free. Kill that shit. Please kill that shit. I'm telling you, it happened to me. And then my testing, so kill that shit. Um, well again, yeah, we're, we're gonna be... Oh yeah, so like, I don't think I mentioned how fucking important Ice Age is. You need Ice Age to get rid of that fucking 7 cost 7k. Because for some fucking reason, 7 and it's 3, you know. It's a 3 cost, it evolves, like it's fucking Pokemon, and then boom. ETG shits out, and you're like, fuck. So just make sure you keep those Ice Ages. You need a mulligan for Ice Age. Ice Age is so crucial in this matchup, guys. And then Gecko Moria needs to... You need to play that Gecko, Rebecca, Spandai, and Luchi shit. You have to get that shit out. Like, if you get that shit out, there's a good chance you can win, bro. Can you come back? Because now that ETG... The ETGs they play, they can't get rid of this shit. So the ETGs you play, boom. Like, unless they got a blocker, you swing a 9 into them. They're going to let it die or give you two cards. Or swing 11 with two Donna. Play another Gecko. Like, Gecko is just so good in this matchup. Because it can actually fucking battle each GG other than our other shitters. So, anyway. Let's go to Pudding. Okay, so Pudding can sack you sometimes. Okay, so Pudding's an, a deck. In the format, it's still pretty played. Like, it's going to be like... It, like, if you learn how to play Pudding, you can kind of learn the other yellow matches are pretty similar. But Pudding's probably the most popular, so I decided to include it in this video. Um, my tips for putting are pretty minimal, but, okay, so first of all, if you're playing Kuzlan, you really don't need this, like, this guy, you should be able to figure it out, but if you're not, it can be a little tricky, so don't use Ice Ages and Radish Shear events, uh, reduction events early, playing Kuzlan, like I said, makes the matchup free, and you can win without it, but paying attention to the resources, is, you have to, it's all, like, um, you have to be aware of how many units can kill, because once they start playing 10 costs and you can't kill it, it's over, it, it's over. Because, um, but the most times this deck's kind of ass. Like, I mean, this deck is pretty ass because it can brick, and it's like, it, 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 like, you have to go second, low key. But, like, like, I mean, you can 9 mom, but 10 mom's insane, right? So, or 10 cost. So, keeping the board clean, it's, it's like similar to Katakuri. If you ever play Katakuri back then, you, like, they trigger some bullshit. You gotta clean it up. You can't let shit sit there because, like, they're gonna hit you with that shit, and then you have to counter out of that. And if you have to counter out of that, or you have to take it, then the 10 mom is really gonna hurt. Um, another cheeky cards they play, I think they play this High Kai Sovereignty card, which is minus 2 K, like, I think it's KO 2 6 cost. It's pretty ass. But this one's already kind of pretty notable because we have Sabo, so minus 1, rest of 6 cost. They do play that. It's Sheep Sworn. I think it's a 2 cost. Um, keep this in mind when you're playing blockers and protecting from a lethal swing from like their 10 moms. Uh, Kiku is hella annoying, but just because it heals them, we cannot ignore them. They're a four, 4 life, so maybe healing them one won't be too bad, but having a 6k swinger they can attach one Dawn to and swing 7 at you, you need to you need to guard hella. This, they are playing an aggro deck. It's linear as hell, and it's it's not fun, but you, you gotta... You, you gotta play it like like this into pudding. Um. Okay. So that's the end of my advanced matchup guide for Rob Lucci. All the slides are in the description. If there was a matchup we didn't go over, it's probably because I either think it's 
not as relevant or it's not very hard however if you guys do struggle with those matchups i'd be happy to make another video so just put your comments and questions in the discussion and potentially we'll do a q a video depending on how many questions are there i'll just answer them in the comments below but thanks for watching my video and if you enjoyed today don't forget to like and subscribe and i really appreciate it and helps the channel and if you want to see more up-to-date content from me and updates about my one piece tcg journeys check out my twitter down below at caramel ice cube all right peace guys peace